Hey guys, what's going on? My name's Akil, and today I'm going to be doing my first review ever for my channel. Now, I know I haven't shown everything in my DVD collection yet, but I'm just going to do it now because of the holiday so I can get a review over and done with. But anyway, yeah, so today I'll be reviewing Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl. I actually saw this two days ago, so <laughs> I have to try to remember stuff. But anyway, I did write quite a bit down and also when I was watching the movie I took some notes down uh so here's how it's gonna work like most reviewers they usually give a score maybe out of 10 out of 5 out of 100 a grade like A to E or maybe even a made up name so yeah uh a word or whatever but I'm just gonna do the normal 1 to 10 thing I uh, wanna yeah so yeah and also uh, my review is going to be structured kind of similarly to normal people and uh, reviewers, but I'm following like the original way to do reviews. So I'll be talking about the story, the positives, the negatives, and then going uh, uh, into a more deep look at the film and where it really like, you know, like was lacking and missing stuff and also had great strong points to it. So yeah, now it's not going to be, I'm not like those guys that, like, write essays for film. This is my first time doing a review on YouTube, so, yeah. And the reason why I'm not showing you any pictures or images, well, except for this DVD cover, of course, because I don't want to get copyrighted. I just hope this one doesn't, but, yeah, anyway, yeah. Yeah, so let's jump right into this. So, first, the structure of my reviews. How I will do with my reviews, I will introduce the movie, which I already just said what I saw, talk about the plot briefly, the, without spoilers, um... Uh, a pre-rating score, uh, this will affect like how I give my final score. So if it's a bad movie, or I, or I should say start from the bottom, a really bad movie, a 1 or 2 out of 10. A bad movie, a 3 or 4 out of 10. A okay movie, a 5 or 6. A good movie, a 7. And a great movie, an 8, 9 or 10. Now I know a great movie feels a bit lenient uh, giving uh, an 8 out of 10 to a great movie, but still, hey, 8 out of 10 is still pretty damn good, right? Yeah. Uh, now, uh, after that, I'll talk about the positives, the negatives, and then anal analytically going to the uh, film. Yeah. I hope that's the word I'm using correctly for this that statement guys but anyway yeah so let's just jump right into this no more stops no more pauses guys so yeah but i will only give my score out of 10 right at the end after the analysis so yeah now most of the time when or, or majority of the time when i was watching the movie i only saw at the like all this or i only analyzed the film at the start so i didn't write much during some of the other process because it really isn't that bad of a movie, guys. So you know what I'm going to give this movie, guys. So yeah. Alright, so let's talk about the plot first. So, Pirates of the Caribbean Curse of the Black Pearl features three or four main characters. Jack Sparrow, played by Johnny Depp. Jeffrey Rush. Or should I say, ugh, Captain Barbosa, played by Jeffrey Rush. Elizabeth T I was going to say her fake name. Elizabeth Swan, played by Kira Knightley. And Will Turner, played by Orlando Bloom, which you can see the actors and actresses name at the top of the cover with their faces. Now, uh, Jack Sparrow, for him to be in the center of the DVD, of course, of the cover, is pretty uh, likely because, you know, he is the main character of the movie. Well, kind of. You don't really see him at the start, but still. And basically, what the plot now, the plot of the movie, what it is, basically is this. Jack Sparrow, or should I say, Will Turner, with the help of Jack Sparrow, have to go and rescue Elizabeth Swan from pirates led by Captain Barbosa. And that's just not that. That's not just... Uh, sorry, guys. That's not just it. Yeah, that's what I was trying to say. Along the way, stuff happens. You know, you finally find out who these pirates are. What they're capable of doing, and you know, there's this big battle, and the ships at the end, at the battles on back on water and sea, and all that's pretty cool. Yeah, what a priority stuff. Yeah, pretty badass. And there's some cool stuff at the end too. And yeah, <laughs> my explanation was really bad, wasn't it, guys? No, really, this is a really fun movie, guys. Um, 
yeah, there isn't much to give away, but now, here's the thing. When I say an analysis, I will be spoiling a bit of the movie, guys, or quite a bit. So, remember how I said briefly for the plot? I said briefly because I would not want to tell you about the things I would say later on for my analysis. I don't want to repeat it, guys, but still, if I have to, then probably, but still. Yeah, that's the basic plot. So, Jack Sparrow... Elizabeth Swan, uh, Will Turner, the, 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 whatever, the British, uh, the England people, those guys, uh, teaming up to stop against Barbosa and his army of pirates. And basically, this is about the curse of Black Pearl because the Black Pearl is a ship and there's a lot of other stuff happening. So, yeah. So, that's my, I guess, somewhat basic plot summary of the film. Now... What about the movie itself? So let's talk about the positive first before I go in depth with this movie. The positives. It has action. Great action. Great uh, swashbuckling fancy movies need great action. And this one does. The fight scenes. While there isn't as much short fights as you would hope for it to have. I get that. It's the first movie of a franchise. But still. Now speaking of which people think this is the favorite one it's not for me it's not it's one of the best but it's not for me sorry guys yeah uh it's it's actually better than the one that came out this year surprisingly so yeah because i watched that this year i have a vague vague memory of it i saw that once but seeing this so many times and seeing this two days ago i was like yeah this is so much more enjoyable than the one that came out this year i mean that one did have its moment but still yeah that one was more, I think, on the action adventure side. You know what I mean, guys. Uh, yeah, so the action really made it enjoyable. Uh, the humor. Joined up as Jack Sparrow is, fanta- is a fantastic uh, cast uh, choice, guys, for someone to play Jack Sparrow. I mean, you could not have asked a better actor to play such an iconic and classic character. This guy, this character is really really one of the best movie characters or one of the best characters ever made period it's amazing he does a fantastic job this is his best role for me in my opinion he did okay as Willy Wonka he did okay as Mad Hatter uh he was okay in Corpse Pride but this one is the best one yeah I said okay for all of those other movies guys and Edward Scissorhands he was also pretty good too yeah uh and, of course, the acting, like I said before, with the humor, John Depp, but the acting in this movie was top-notch, I would say. Yeah, everyone brought their A-game. Jeffrey Rush killed it as Barbosa. He was really menacing. Kieran Knightley was so innocent in this movie. Like, she had no idea what was going on. And Orlando Bloom, I love him as this character. As much as I love him in The Lord of the Rings and also The Hobbit movie. Let's not forget, he's in other movies too. Like, he's known for this big, strong, muscular, like, sword fighting uh, roles. Oh, roles where the guy picks up a sword or bow and arrow, like Lego stars in the Hobbit Lord of the Rings. And, uh, yeah, he's also in Kingdom of Heaven and Troy, guys. So, yeah, go check those movies out. Um, negatives. Uh, this movie is a bit slow paced. I felt like, when I was watching, I was like, oh, I wouldn't say boring though, but, uh, I mean, yeah, it has to be, like, there has to be quite a bit of dialogue, but I felt it was a bit short place halfway through the movie, like, it dropped down a bit, so that, that kind of annoyed me, uh, yeah, uh, scenes unexpectedly, uh, or changes in scenes unexpectedly, like, there was a part where dialogue started coming, and then they just changed the scene, I was like, why? I don't know why movies do that, guys. They should at least show something that moves smoothly. Like, not just quickly change the scene. Yeah. Uh, and backstory for Jack. There was no backstory for Jack. Uh, I know it comes out a bit later for this character, but still. Uh, yeah. No backstory for Jack, sadly. Alright, now. And now is this time. First up. The first major negative I found out for this movie, other than uh, the ones I just said. Is there's no Disney logo. That let me down. Uh, yeah, I should mention there's going to be spoilers here, guys. So, if you don't want to see this, turn off the video tonight, right now. But if you do, then keep watching. But anyway, no Disney logo. For some reason, the logo was not there. They just straight away jumped into the movie. Now, 
I didn't really care about it before because I was just a normal guy liking movies, but now I have to say that every movie needs a logo. And I just realized when I was watching, I was like, hey, I'm so used to seeing the Disney logo. Where is it now? They did it for uh, the second, the third, and the fourth, and also the fifth movie. So why not this movie? Where is the Disney logo, guys? That let me down. I mean, come on. I get that the movie's wrong, but at least add a logo, guys. Come on. Maybe it's in the original cut, I don't know, but I, I mean the uh, uh, theatrical version, I don't know, but still. Here, this is Blu-ray. They should at least have a logo. I mean, they could advertise a bunch of Blu-rays coming out, not show a logo. What is this? Anyway, the opening of the movie, I absolutely loved it. It's, it's a good intro for the characters and, you know, and a flashback. It's great to see that these characters start off... Uh, in, with a flashback. This movie starts off with a flashback showing these characters, Elizabeth and Will, as children and how they meet. You could tell uh, they don't look. Uh, you can tell. Wait, let me try and say what I'm trying to say. Sorry, guys, this is my first review, so yeah, I would probably have. I, I have already stopped up quite a few times. But anyway, what I'm trying to say, guys, is that you can tell that these characters are going to be like, you know. In love or something like that in the future. Because the way like uh. What's it? Elizabeth Swan like. Obviously it's not Keira Knightley as a child. But the actress. The young actress playing uh. Elizabeth Swan. In that flashback scene at the start. You could tell she already fell in love with the character. And that brings me to a negative later on. So yeah. So after that. Flashback. This is when the movie. Had it's three problems. The only. Uh, three, four and a half problems for the part I could pick out. So first up, we have close up of Keira Knightley's face. The moment the flashback ends, you are already zoomed into the face. I get that you ended with that. You could have just, you know what, to made it could have made it better when she shut her eyes. It could have just said "Part of Caribbean" because of black hole, and then modern day or something like that. That could have been so much more better. But instead, no, they didn't. But still, no, I'm not trying to uh, criticize and go against Gore Vivininsky's uh, style of directing this movie. But still, the way it was cut I was like, uh, do we really have to st start off in the actual film with a close up of Keira Knightley's face? I mean, come on. Why? She was 18 in this movie. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, Next up, we have, oh my gosh, this scene, unnecessary dress-up scene. There's a scene in this movie, like, right after that scene, where her father gives her a new dress, a new quote, according, her quoting, and she wears it, and they have to just show it. I hate when movies, like, show these most random things ever, guys, yeah, but that's, that's a negative that annoyed me. All right, now on to some positive, well, before neg negative comes, first scene of Will Turner. In modern day, after the flashback, it's funny. I really liked how he took up that lamp and then he was like, uh, I don't know where to put it. I'll just put it here. That was classic. I love how they introduced Will as a proper fully grown uh, young adult or man, in other words. As this guy who's very innocent too, like, and he has this funny style to him. He, that was really, I have to admit, that was... That was a pretty good scene, clever scene. Well done, nice work for doing that. Go well, well done, nice work. Uh, also, uh, there is another negative. Love at first sight between Will and Elizabeth, or Elizabeth and Will, whatever. Uh, the moment she comes down the stairs, you can already see that he's already in love with her. He's already like trying to fall for her and all that type of stuff. It was opposite in the flashback, but this time, you know, you can tell. The boy is falling for the girl. And he's being very respectful by calling her Miss Swan. When she doesn't really want to be addressed as Miss Swan. So yeah. And then she calls him back. Calls, oh, calls him back, yeah. Calls him back, uh, Mr. Turner. And then she leaves. And then we have Jack Sparrow's first appearance. Now, like I said, there are spoilers. And majority of it is like at the start of the film. I did say that before. Yeah, I did. Yeah. But my analysis, uh, Jack Sparrow's first appearance is funny and we get to know what type of character he is. The part when he takes off his hat 
and pays respect to those three pirates that died that are not skeletons. You can tell he's a very respectful guy, very loyal pirate, and also, well, not really loyal, yeah, we don't know that yet, but he's also funny. When the ship sinks, you can tell this character is known, is going to be a very fun one. They did such a great job with him. Well done, Disney, for creating a great character. Yeah. Uh. Anyway, next up we have Jack's first Jack Sparrow escape. It's funny, and good use of music. Yes, the first time you hear the Pirates of the Caribbean music in this scene in the movie is when Jack first escapes. That is iconic stuff right there. I love hearing that. The music in especially a scene like that. Jack Sparrow's escape scenes are one of the best scenes of the entire franchise period. I love every one of those scenes. It's such a great those scenes are such great scenes. But Jack Sparrow's first escape is iconic. It's classic. With the music, the humor, like he's screaming like ah! Yeah, you know what I mean. That Okay, next up, first scene with Jack and Will together. Good action and funny. Yes. That scene where Jack and Will meet each other in the blacksmith's place, have a sword fight with the music was awesome. And they added humor in it. When Jack was trying to take the sword out of the door, that was classic. I love that. So yeah. Uh, first scene with Jack and Will. Oh, I already said that. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Introduction of Barbosa's crew. Not much action. Yes. Now, I'm reading off a of paper. That's why I keep pausing, guys. Sorry about that. But yeah. The crew, when they attack the, the, the town at night, uh, was not, like, that memorable. It was kind of memorable, like, the part when, uh, uh, when the Boom character, Will Turner, like, is looking at this guy, and then this, and he's uh, about to be attacked by one of Barbosa's crewmen, and he's like, say goodbye, and then something just flies at him and goes, bam, and smashes him through the window, and he's like, goodbye. That's a nice way to add humor in it, but there isn't much action. People die, but there's not much action. There's not like sword fighting. Like, Will Turner could have just picked up a sword and started, like, you know, killing people, but it kind of did. But there wasn't much action from the other guys, too, like, of the men of the town. Like, yeah. Which was kind of disappointing. Uh, first reference of Bootstrap Bill. That reference, though, when they reference Bootstrap Bill, would be something fans who had never seen the movie before would be like, well, okay, reach that bill. Who is this guy? It's only until the next film you realize who he really is. Now, I will not spoil the next film for those of you who are not seen it. Only spoilers for this film, so don't worry, guys. But reach that bill. Great way to reference a character. Great little Easter egg, kind of. It's kind of an Easter egg, but reference too, but still. I would say it's more of a reference than the Easter egg. Easter egg, I think, is something you probably see, but still. Yeah, Bootstrap Bill. I really like that. Great reference. Anything with Easter eggs or good references for future films is great. Alright, next up we have uh, a bit of backstory for Jack Sparrow, but not backstory. The reason why I said not backstory, but not backstory, is because it gives us a bit of insight on who this character is, how he was in who he how he was in the past, but it doesn't really show like or explain like when Gibbs is uh uh telling uh uh Will uh about you know about Jack and his relationship with the black pillar type of stuff in the past. It doesn't really talk about and they don't really show like his childhood. That's something that I always wanted to probably know probably wanted to know about this character. They showed I mean, they showed, like, his dad, but not in this room, of course. That comes with it. I won't tell you when his dad comes, though. Uh, yeah. But they don't show him as a child. Come on. You can show two of the most important characters in the film as kids, but not the probably most iconic character of the entire franchise and the film. Come on. What is this? I know you... I know you don't want to make the film that one, but still, at least do something. That's why I also would say it's a positive and a negative. It's a positive because you gave a bit of backstory for the character. Like, you made us, like, understand why he wanted black belt and all type of stuff. But it's also a negative because it doesn't show, like, an actual backstory for the character. Like, like you know, who he is and all that as a child. 
what he's motivated to do. You kind of get the sense of it, but not really. All right, next up, good use of music at the final battle. Yes, I jumped a long way, guys. The final battle, great use of music. I loved it. And also good action in the final battle. Every final battle needs great action, not some fast-paced ending like the Great War had. Oh, disappointing. Anyway, uh, the action was great. Uh, yeah, great swashbuckling action right there, guys. Yeah, and not much of the crew though in the final battle, which is also a negative for that. It's a positive and a negative. And finally, to wrap up, funny ending. Yes, guys, this movie has a very funny ending. So yeah, uh, yeah, that's about it. When the part when he like almost try, he tries to finish trying, he almost finishes it. But he doesn't actually finish. So yeah. He's like. This is the day. You always remember. It's the day. That you almost caught. Captain Jack. And then he falls down. Or something like that. But he doesn't. I think he doesn't say. I think he's like. This is the day. You. Today is the day. You always remember. It's the day. That you almost caught. Captain Jack. Something like that. You know what I'm trying to say guys. Yeah. Okay. That is my. In that review. And my other review for Jack Sparrow's first adventure, Pirates of Caribbean, The Cast of Black Pearl. Yes, Gore Verbeninski did a great job directing this movie, but overall, this movie is a solid movie. I wouldn't give this movie a 10 out of 10 like most people would, but it's a great way to start the franchise. It's not a great movie, but it's a good movie. So overall, I have to say that this movie deserves a 7 out, 7 out of 10. I don't think I said it's a good movie before, but... I'm saying it now. Yeah, it's a good movie. So it deserves a 7 out of 10. Do you get it now, guys? If it's a good movie, it's a 7 out of 7 out 10. So just remember that. Good movie, 7 out of 10. Great movie, 8 to 9. 8 to 10. In other words, 8, 9, 10. Bad movie, 3 or 4. Okay movie, 5 or 6. And a really bad movie, 1 or 2. Yeah, I've seen really bad movies. But still. Anyway, yeah. So... That's my view for Pirates of the Caribbean, Curse of the Black Pill. Hope you guys enjoyed it. What did you think about this movie? Uh, tell me in the comments below. Subscribe to my channel. Watch my collection videos. And thanks for watching and see you guys for another review. Bye guys.